Yeah, getting drunk. Everybody wants to, I, or everyone you know, does it once in a while, you know. So, so let's just let's just count it down. I thought this was America, huh? Isn't this America? And I promise that's the end of my drunk guy impression. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top Five Facts. For today's installment, we're looking at the most interesting facts about how alcohol interacts with the human body. Oh, you're the best. You're so unique. Number five. There's a reason we act more confident when we're drunk. How about a little sex on the beach? Oh, I think my place is closer. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Do you ever wonder why you turn into your smoother, more confident alter ego when you're drunk? A study from the Society of Neuroscience has your answer, and it has to do with the part of your brain responsible for detecting threats. In their study, they performed brain scans on a group twice, once sober and once drunk, while they were shown scary images. When sober, there was activity in the amygdala, insula, and parahippocampal gyrus, regions associated with fear response. When drunk, there was significantly less activity, indicating that when drunk, your brain circuits can't tell the difference between threatening and non-threatening stimulus. With no threats, confidence abounds, not to mention charm and tact. I admire your luck, Mr. Bond. James Bond. Number four, vodka and Red Bull is a bad idea. Welcome to college. Yeah, pop up hamper. Shower caddy. Yeah, college, freedom, and parties, and all that fun stuff. But the bro who whips out the Red Bull, give him a little punch in the neck. Researchers have found that students who mix using energy drinks are twice as likely to drive with an intoxicated person, to become injured, and to receive medical attention than those just drinking liquor. This is likely because the symptoms of drunkenness are seemingly reduced due to the stimulating effects of the caffeine, but the actual drunkenness is not. So you're drunk, but don't know it. And since you're wired, you can drink more without passing out. Many states and countries have banned or restricted the sale of caffeinated alcoholic beverages, including the infamous Four Loco. Number three, you're more likely to survive an accident drunk than sober. License and registration, please. What seems to be the officer problem? Some good news and some bad news if you're an alcoholic. A study conducted by Harvard UCLA Medical Center found that in the nearly 8,000 traumatic accidents they studied, 7% of sober patients died, compared to only 1% of drunk patients. More study is needed to figure out exactly how this works, but basically alcohol alters the body's response to injury in a way that seems to help both survival and recovery. The bad news? Many people think that alcohol relaxes your limbs and muscles, allowing you to better take an impact than if your body tensed in anticipation. But researchers from the University of Illinois at Chicago say that this effect is either overestimated or completely false. More bad news? Drunks are still much more likely to wind up in an accident than sober people. Surprise, surprise. Uh, could you do me a favor? Hold this beer while I back it up. Number two. Only 8% of sports fans get drunk at games. <laughs> This is according to an American study published in 2011, which confirmed the findings of a Canadian study from the 90s. The researchers gave a breathalyzer test to a small sample of spectators leaving baseball and football games. 8% of them were over the legal blood alcohol content limit for driving. I kind of expected it to be more than that. But if that seems low, consider this. The average NFL stadium holds somewhere around 70,000 people. That translates to well over 5,000 legally drunk people flooding onto the streets and highways at once making me not want to be part of the other 92%, thanks. Ah, oh, Jesus, not again. Number one, it's possible to achieve a reverse tolerance. But that doesn't mean you should be proud of it. Drinking ah, beer pubs, <laughs> shall we? It's a well-known fact that greater alcohol consumption leads to a higher tolerance. This is because steady changes occur in the brain and liver to adapt to the large amounts of alcohol. However, a heavy drinker wreaks havoc on their liver often resulting in liver damage. When the liver is damaged, it no longer produces enough enzymes to break down alcohol and can't metabolize it, leading to a much lower tolerance than before. With a filtration system that doesn't work, alcohol gets into the blood much faster and easier, allowing these individuals to essentially become drunk off very few drinks. So what do you think? 
I'm so drunk. I can't even like process this. Should caffeinated booze be more widely available? <laughs> For more social lubricant top tens and fall on your face top fives, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.